Hey, what's up? I'm Caleb, and in this video, we're going to talk about a brand new feature inside of Midjourney that is an absolute game changer for AI filmmakers. InPainting allows you to art direct and change specific elements inside of your frame. So instead of having to reprompt an entire scene over and over again, you can specifically art direct the individual parts that you want to change. It's really exciting and I'm excited to dive into it with you today. But first we need to address the elephant in the room, right? Generative fill inside of Photoshop has allowed you to do in painting for a few months now. So the question is, how does Photoshop compare to the new Midjourney update? I want to compare these two tools with you today and share a few very practical use cases for in painting using Midjourney. Hopefully by the end of this video, you're feeling super inspired to get started with in-painting and you know some of the very tactical ways in which it will help your workflow. So let's get started inside of Midjourney. So I'm inside of Midjourney and I've created a server in which I can interface with Midjourney. This is a private server and you can see I have the Midjourney bot invited. You can also just interface directly with Midjourney through the uh, individual direct messages channel inside Discord. So to get started with in painting, first we need to set up a very important setting. So go ahead and type in forward slash and type in settings and go ahead and send the command. What I want you to make sure you have set up is the remix mode. Make sure remix mode is selected and also high variation mode. If you have those two modes selected, you should be good to go. So in painting is actually super easy to do inside of Midjourney. So what I have here are a few kind of cinematic sci-fi images that I've prompted. And let's say that we want to change one of these. So I'm just looking through here and let's say that I want to remove this person from this frame. Well, in order to in paint, you actually have to upscale the image. Remember we have quadrant one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to hit U2 to upscale number two. And we'll scrub to the bottom here. So we've up this image and you can see that now we have a few different buttons here. We have very strong, very subtle. If you're familiar with Midjourney, then you know that these specific buttons basically allow you to click them and then you can type in a new prompt and kind of art direct this scene based on uh, the current composition. But the new button that has been added is the very region button. So if you go ahead and click that button, it will pop up a new window inside of Discord. Now, I have no idea how they built an application directly inside of Discord. That's really impressive. And uh, I mean, it's kind of crazy, right? That Midjourney runs inside of Discord. It's kind of weird, uh, but it's awesome. <laughs> so uh, right off the bat, you can see that we have two tools here on the bottom left. We have a rectangle kind of uh, marquee tool similar to Photoshop and a lasso tool that is also similar uh, to the one that you may be familiar with inside of Photoshop. So essentially what we can do is go in and select the specific areas that we want to change. Now, the degrees of accuracy and uh, the degree to which Midjourney will accept the changes that you're typing in, uh, it depends specifically on the shots and sometimes just what the overall composition is giving you. So uh, there are mixed results, but uh, generally I've found that it works pretty well. So for this specific scene, I'm going to go ahead and select this astronaut here. So we'll select him. And let's say that uh, we also want to change uh, these kind of glowing orbs here on the, the sides. Well, in order to change them, I could use the rectangle tool and select them, but I actually I'm going to use this lasso tool and we can go ahead and basically just click with the lasso tool and you basically make a shape. And it's a little finicky to work with. You'll get used to it after just a few minutes, uh, but you can basically just make generally the shape that you're looking uh, to create just like this. And if you ever want to remove aspects of uh, the composition with a shape, you can like begin to backtrack and it'll kind of like do some like really interesting and weird uh, shape uh, additions to your frame. So there we go. Uh, we have our composition that we want to change selected. And now let's go in and describe what we want to see. So I'm going to say a cinematic still of a uh, woman in a 1970s sci-fi film shot on Panavision, 70 millimeter film, film stock, Kubrick muted teal color grading. All right. So we're going to get a cool like vintagey sci-fi vibe. 
And I should note before I go ahead and render this that if you ever want to change the uh, specific uh, selections that you've ever made inside of Midjourney, uh, you can click this button and it will deselect the last selection that you made. So uh, it's just a way that you can clean up your composition if you need it. So let's go ahead and click the submit job button. Okay, so let's take a look here. So we have four different panels here. <laughs> Some of them are really silly, right? Uh, this first one and this one are super, super silly. Uh, but this one looks fairly realistic. And this uh, third one here looks really, really awesome. And I love how the color grading just contrasts with the um, just the overall color uh, style that we're going for. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and up res number three. And there we go. So you can see that it looks uh, photorealistic, looks real. And again, if we wanted to manipulate this specific image, we could go in and vary the region. And for example, we could change her hair color, you know, using the, the lasso tool, or we could change uh, her outfit, or uh, we could orient the body to where it's facing the camera. The choice is completely up to us, and uh, it's just a back and forth process whenever you are doing in painting. So that's how to do in painting in a nutshell inside of Mid Journey. Now I want to compare and contrast how this relates to Photoshop's generative fill feature. So I have a few examples here of uh, a woman in a sci-fi film, and let's pick a composition here to remove certain elements from a frame. So I'm going to say that we want to use, uh, let's say this one right here, and we actually want to remove this light here because it's like a little distracting. So I'm gonna go ahead and up res number three, and let's go ahead and vary the region. So all I have to do is use the rectangle tool to select right here, and I'm just going to remove all of our prompting and go ahead and generate. Okay, so let's take a look at our results here. So all three of these look really, really impressive. Uh, I really like uh, one, two, and three. I really feel like the eyes are drawn to the character as opposed to the corner of the frame, but really all of them look photorealistic, and I mean, I would never notice uh, those changes if uh, they were actually inside of a film. So I'm going to go ahead and up res number three as our example. Now let's hop over to Photoshop to do the same process. And I kind of want to show you the, the difference here. And we're inside of Photoshop now. And we'll go ahead and select that rectangle marquee tool. And I'm going to just select the corner just like we did inside of Midjourney and hit generative fill and click generate. Again, we didn't type in any prompting or anything at all. We're just trying to see what Photoshop gives us natively. So let's take a look. So you can see that in the variants that Photoshop gave us, we have three variations, one, two, and three. All of these look pretty darn good. I like this one here, uh, this third one. So I'm gonna go ahead and just export this. And whenever we compare these two images side by side, it's very, very hard uh, to tell the difference. They both did a really fantastic job at replacing the background. Now, I will say that in the mid-journey version, the bokeh continuity uh, in terms of it being connected to specific objects and having those, those linear lines feel a little more natural as opposed to a hard cutoff, uh, it does come across as a little more realistic compared to Photoshop, but generally, I think both of these did well. I think if I had to give them a number, Photoshop gets a 9 out of 10, mid-journey 10 out of 10, but both are fantastic options. So let's take this one step further and I'm going to vary this image again. So let's go ahead and click vary region. And this time I want to actually change her hair. So I'm gonna select the uh, lasso tool here and let's select her hair just like this, like that. And the only prompt I'm gonna type in is brown hair and we'll go ahead and render that out. Okay, let's take a look at our results here. So all four of these look really amazing. They did a really great job. I actually think I like number one a little more, mainly because of the uh, the way the lighting and the color grading from the environment is showing up in the hair. It's kind of creating a smooth transition, uh, which looks pretty uh, darn natural, but all of these are, are really incredible. So I'm gonna go ahead and up res number one. So let's hop back over to Photoshop here and do the exact same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and select just her hair here. So select the hair. 
This is very hard to do on a trackpad on a MacBook. And we'll click Generative Fill, and we want to see brown hair. And let's generate. Okay, so let's look at the variations here. We have one, two, and three. Again, it did a really good job inside of Generative Fill as well. Uh, most of these look realistic. I would say number two here doesn't look great, uh, but, you know, I guess it could hypothetically be realistic. Uh, this one does look real. Uh, some of the pixelation over here isn't super accurate. Um, and then uh, this one uh, does look real. Looks like, like her hair is a little too too big uh, for her head there, but it's, it's not bad, right? Uh, so I'm going to say that I think number one here is our best result. So I'm going to go ahead and export that. Okay, so when we are comparing and contrasting these two images here, uh, you can see that the mid-journey image uh, looks pretty realistic. We even get the individual hair strands and uh, the lighting uh, matches some of this uplighting that's happening uh, to the bottom of her chin here. Uh, whereas uh, this one, you know, the hair just kind of blends in uh, with the same color grading as the background. Both results are very, very good. And now the big difference whenever we zoom in onto our hair here. So I'm zoomed in uh, about 300% uh, to the mid-journey image. You can see that uh, it looks really uh, realistic. I mean, if uh, I saw that as a regular image, I would think that that's just a close-up of someone's hair. Whereas whenever we zoom in on the um, result from Photoshop, we can see that there is a little bit of pixelation happening. So uh, the result inside of Photoshop is uh, not quite as pixel perfect as the result inside of Midjourney. So if I had to put a number rating behind the contextual ability for these tools to specifically change aspects of your character or your composition, I would say that Midjourney gets about an 8 out of 10, whereas Photoshop has about a 6 out of 10 at this point. So I want to compare one more change using these tools. So Let's go ahead, I'm gonna up-res this number one here. And for this one, I want to add in something completely new to the scene. Let's say this is a sci-fi scene and I want to add in like a cool, like out of focus mech robot in the background. So let's go ahead and hit very region. And in this instance, it might make more sense to actually go in and rather than using the uh, impainting feature inside of Midjourney, it might make more sense to actually prompt something new. But I do want to show the limitations here. So I'm just going to create a rectangle over this uh, left side of the frame here, and we'll say a cinematic still of an out-of-focus robot in a 1970s sci-fi film with all of the other tags that are helping us to contextualize and tell Midjourney the overall visual style that we want to see uh, from this image. And I'll remove our aspect ratio tag as well and go ahead and hit render. Okay, let's take a look at our results. So you can see right off the bat that these results inside of Midjourney aren't exactly the best, right? So the first one doesn't even have a robot. Uh, the second one has like a computer screen. Third one, it's like, uh, I don't know, just like a server or something. And then this last one, maybe that's a robot, but it also could just be the side of like a mech suit or something like that. So you can begin to see how it doesn't always take the prompting and the uh, specific direction that you are trying to add into the scene. So sometimes you're going to have quite a bit of back and forth, then you may have to uh, prompt different results. So let's try this one more time. I'm going to vary the region. And this time, instead of adding in any of our contextualization uh, tags, I'm just going to say an out of focus robot. There we go. And we will render. Okay, let's take a look at the results here. So the first one gave us flowers. Okay. Uh, the second one gave us, okay, yeah, that's like a, an out of focus robot, I suppose. Uh, the third is a robot, not really out of focus. And the fourth, it looks like a treadmill in the background. So really not a lot of great results from Midjourney. They look, uh, I, I suppose, photorealistic, but generally the composition, it just doesn't really make sense uh, for the scene. So I would say that in this instance, you probably would want to reprompt the scene um, you could even use a seed to pull that specific variant if you wanted to. But in this instance, I think, uh, let's say number two is the best. So inside of Photoshop, we'll just do the exact same thing. We'll take this rectangle and kind of make a rectangle for the left side of the frame, generative fill, and we'll say an out of focus robot and generate. 
Okay, let's take a look at what we have here. So the first one gives us uh, generally an out of focus robot looking to the right. Seems pretty good. Uh, number two, that robot looks pretty darn bad. And number three, that's, uh, that's terrible. It's a little creepy, actually. Uh, so I think number one is probably the best robot here. Uh, you know, it, it generally the color grading is not exactly right, but it's not crazy off either. And, um, you know, it is <laughs> what we prompted. Now, if we compare these two images, obviously the Midjourney one is a lot more photorealistic. It inherited the color grading qualities and just generally looks more real. Uh, whereas the Photoshop one, it took our direction a little better, uh, but it did a much worse job in terms of compositing that element into the scene. So there's kind of good and bad aspects of each one. I would say if I had to give them both a score, I'd say I'd give Midjourney maybe a four out of 10, Photoshop probably a three out of 10. So I hope you found this video to be interesting. If you wanna stay up to date on the latest AI films, trends, and tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter at Curious Refuge. Thank you so much for watching this video. I wish you the best of luck on your creative projects. We'll see you next time. Hey, I'm an AI generated clone of Caleb. He wanted to take this time to encourage you to subscribe to the channel because he totally forgot to record a sign off when he created the video the first time. So please subscribe, like, and we'll see you in the next one.